morning. Good to be gathered in worship. The fall weather, crisp, we changes, changes upon us. Changes upon us. Although the color's not quite what we're looking for yet. But yeah. uh, just one announcement. Uh, what I looked up at the beginning here, and that's our Northy offering. Um, this month is Shop with a Cop. And we're collecting in October, so we've got the, the money ahead of time. Um, so click one slide there. Um, just thank everyone for their contributions to um, the adopt a family for school and the uh, high sale and um, everything else. Now we're just back to the the loose change. We don't have the kids running around the camps yet but, um, because of COVID, but loose change offering for Shop of the Cop this, this year. I, I added to the screens a little emblem in the corner, um, sitting or standing, and that's when pastor forgets to give an instruction. Um, so um, please follow those and, and be comfortable. Um, if it's standing too long, it's okay to sit. It's okay to, to sit. Um, I invite you to stand now. We begin our worship and greet one another with a wave, but also look and say, I'm glad you're here. whose presence is sure and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Having gathered to worship the Lord in holiness, we confess our sins to the one who welcomes us, the one who clothes us with his righteousness, God, our comforter. Like lost sheep, we have gone astray. Days on the abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We allow the earth to be exploited by those possessed by greed. Free us from our apathy and the wraths of sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love, we ask, to love our neighbors with the reflection of the love we know from you. Amen. We're not alone. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yet there is good news. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God has made you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Thanks be to God. Gather him. Praise to the Lord Almighty.
in prayer. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples of the earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom, and make us desire always and only to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. For he is subject to the same weaknesses they have. 
That is why he has to offer sacrifices, both for their sins and for his own sins. And no one can become a high priest simply because he wants such an honor. He has to be called by God for this work, just as Aaron was. That is why Christ did not exalt him to become high priest. No, he was chosen by God, who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And in another passage, God said to him, You are a high priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings, with a loud cry and tears, to the one who could deliver him out of death. And God heard his prayers because of his reverence, reverence for God. So even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. And God designated him to be a high priest in the light of Melchizedek. The word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Children for children's sermon. guys today. So give me an example of something that's difficult to do. Something that maybe you don't want to do or it seems too hard. The monkey bars? <laughs> yeah. Well, that takes some strength in the arm, right? But if you get swinging, swinging, <laughs> I remember the monkey bars. Um, then you can makes it easier to go from one to the other. Do you like to go to the, do the monkey bars, or do you find it hard? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so would it be a sacrifice to do the monkey bars? No. Is there some fun in it? Trying. Even if you can't do it, there's some fun in, in doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes we think of something as being just too difficult to do or too much to ask. Um, and it's a sacrifice. And we hear in today's readings about some suffering and sacrifice by Jesus and the disciples. And we think, well, why bother with that? Unless some good can come out of it. So do you think practicing on the monkey bars would make it even more fun? Yeah, yeah. But things are worthwhile. It can be difficult, but we can still overcome it. Will you repeat after me as we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for all the ways we're growing and becoming better and better. Thank you for family, teachers and school, all the ways that you provide for me to grow up strong and healthy. Amen. Thank you, guys. If they haven't come up with something, there's always the laundry basket, right? <laughs> we stand with sing our gospel acclamation. <laughs> Chapter. 
They were now on their way to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. The disciples were filled with dread, and the people following behind were overwhelmed with fear. Taking the twelve disciples aside, Jesus once more began to describe everything that would happen to him in Jerusalem. When we get to Jerusalem, he told them, the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die and hand him over to the Romans. And they will mock him, spit on him, beat him with their whips, and they'll kill him. After three days, he will rise again. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came over and spoke to Jesus. Teacher, they said, we want you to do us a favor. What is it, he asked. In your kingdom, we want to sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of sorrow I am about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with? Oh yes, they said, we are able. And Jesus said, you will indeed drink from my cup and be baptized with my baptism. But I have no right to say who will sit on the thrones next to mine. God has prepared those places for those he has chosen. When the ten other disciples discovered what James and John had asked, they were indignant. So Jesus called them all together and said, You know that in this world kings and tyrants and officials lord their power over the people beneath them. But among you it should be quite different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave to all. For even I, the Son of Man, came here to serve, not to be served, but to serve others, and to give my life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. today's readings. I have spoken in the past about how I had put my trust in social contracts of the world. You know that agreement. Work hard for the enterprise and you'll be rewarded. Yet after much suffering and sacrifice for the human enterprise, it didn't deliver the promises on my behalf. Instead, I and my family suffered, and not the good suffering of faith, suffering and uncertainty and hopelessness. That is until I humbled myself again before God, put my trust first in God's goodness, God's promises. Promises I heard going to Sunday school, in worship, you know them. Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. I am and you are also so precious to God that he sent his only son, the son of God. He was born in the natural way, grew up and experienced the challenges and joys of human life. And with that life, Jesus proclaimed through word and deed the truth of God's love. God's presence, God's goodwill for all of humanity. This is looking outward, looking outward and loving the world that God so loves. John's Gospel accurately describes the response of those who look inward only to their own interests, who in their own minds don't find a need for God. Reading from John 3, verses 18 and 19. There is no judgment awaiting for those who trust in Jesus. But those who do not trust in him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact, that the light from heaven came into the world, 
but they loved the darkness more than the light because their deeds were evil. Social contracts in this world masquerade as good, and some are good. They're good when they're carried out by those who carry the love of Jesus in their hearts. Those are the people that we want to be around and have as co-workers. But others only mimic the promise of abundant life as if they could provide that apart from God's presence. So how long? So, but so long as they do not honor God above all else, the promises lack the sure foundation of God being the source of all good, mercy, and love. But we can learn from today's gospel what that looks like. James and John seem to be crossing a line with Jesus, thinking that maybe God works for them instead of the other way around. They want to specify their reward for the sacrifice and suffering And to not fall into that trap ourselves. Well, that's one thing we can take away from today's gospel lesson. That in this scene, Jesus responds to the favor they ask by helping them to see from God's point of view the fruit of suffering and sacrifice. It's fruit through God's eyes, God's purpose in preparing for the life to come. James and John request that their request is truly remarkable in the context where Jesus has just talked about what will happen to him. He and his close followers, the disciples, are journeying towards Jerusalem, towards an unpleasantness. Jesus has embodied God's mercy, God's love. He has upended worldly social contracts and those obligated to those contracts are not happy with him because he's revealed them for what they are and God knows they're planning to get even. Mark clues us in, stirs our caution as he describes the cloud of anxiety hanging over that group traveling to Jerusalem. Jesus was walking ahead of them, Mark noted. The disciples were filled with dread and the people followed behind, overwhelmed with fear. This is why it's not hard for me to imagine that James and John made the request that they did. None of us want to live in such a state of emotional disturbance as they were at that time. Not for long. So James and John, soon after Jesus had for the third time told them what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem, they rushed quickly to secure a happy ending for themselves. Yes, we'll get through this, but this is what I want to see on the end, on the other side. Teacher, they addressed Jesus. We want you to do us a favor. In your glorious kingdom, we want to sit in places of honor next to you. One on your right, the other on the left. Well, the assurance of that future reward would make it easier for them to endure the dreadful events Jesus has predicted. Easier if they were, were sure that afterwards they would be so honored and secure in the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus isn't saying they won't enter into the kingdom of God, but those seats of honor that's another question. They have faith, they believe and trust that God will bring Jesus and them through the terrible events before them. But they're clearly looking to be rewarded for their sacrifice and suffering. And there's nothing wrong with looking towards that reward, except when you're trying to take the steering wheel out of God's hands. And you're trying to make it yours what you want instead of trusting God to give you what you need. But isn't that the attraction of the world's social contracts? 
we get to choose and steer our lives along a road of self-interest. The world is supposed to cooperate, reward, and honor us for our hard work. That's the way I understood the promise. I've seen it work for others. Why not for me? Well, I can't answer for anybody else. But the tension between the way the world works and God's preferred future for each of us can be summed up in this, that nothing in the world can love you the way that God loves you, nor will. Be merciful and forgiving as God is merciful and forgiving. Systems of the world. They can only guarantee suffering, sacrifice, taxes, and death. Yet God has made our hearts to believe each of our lives are of more value and significance than that. It's clear to me that God wants to steer us along paths of beauty and love, of mutual support, recognition. This requires faith not in a specific contract, rather each of us to believe and trust in God's goodness and God working His good will even through sinners like my neighbor and myself. Likewise, James and John had to trust and follow Jesus with heaven in view, but no guarantee of those thrones of honor. Heaven in view. I imagine if they had focused primarily on those seats of honor and an expectation for that, it might have been that they could no longer truly serve Jesus because they were serving their own self-interest and were singularly focused. So instead of granting their request or giving them conditions to meet which would guarantee that they would have those thrones of honor, Jesus tests their willingness to sacrifice and suffer for the sake of the good news. You don't know what you're asking, he said to them. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup that I must drink? Are you able to be baptized with the suffering I must be baptized with? Seems amazing, their answer. Oh yes, we are able. Yet the only assurance Jesus gave them was, you will indeed drink from my cup and be baptized with my baptism, but I have no right to say who will sit on the thrones next to mine. God has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. Jesus does give them assurance that they will suffer and sacrifice. They will have a place in the kingdom, but they don't get to specify what that is. I have reason to believe that Jesus was confident the Holy Spirit, God's grace, would sustain them if they would rely upon God's help through those difficult trials and more and beyond as they obeyed and taught all people what Jesus had taught them. It's the same for each of us. Even facing death, we do not face it as those whose hope is in the temporal things of the world, the promises of the world. We face all of it with the assurance that God's love will not fail us. God's love. He is with us even when we suffer through the dark valley, the shadow of death. James and John and we must practice faith, believe and trust God's unfailing love is for each of us personally and for those around us, others in the world, even those on the fringe of the congregation, those who know Christ, but maybe don't lean in to him as much as I know I've needed to in my life. With James and John, we're learning we cannot afford to be passive towards the life Jesus sacrificed and suffered for each of us to have. Well, the other ten heard they were indignant 
conflict. Could you imagine what conflict would be there unless Jesus reminded them the way the world is one, but not among you, you who know me. Jesus called them together. He says, you know the world, in the world, the kings are tyrants, the officials lord their power over the people beneath them, but not so among you. It should be quite different. Whoever wants to be the leader among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. Even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and give my life as a ransom for many. He really turns it all upside down, doesn't he? The way the world works versus the kingdom values of truly loving and caring for one another. But isn't that the people we've been attracted to in our lives and been able to put our trust in walking with us in our life's journey? Those who are willing to serve without regard to the reward, but trusting not that they'll be punished for doing good, but that God will help them in their life. They stay on that sure, firm path of trusting in God above all else. So what does this say about honor and glory? How is that measured? This is the vision that God gave through the prophet Isaiah regarding the one who would die enthroned on a cross with a sinner on his left and a sinner on his right. And from that cross, before he died, Jesus looked out and he loved all of them, everyone. And he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, forgive them. We learn from Isaiah. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of what he has experienced, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I give him honor of one who is mighty and great because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among those who were sinners. He bore the sins of many and interceded for sinners. Almighty God, today we have come to worship you. From the condemnation of sin, you have redeemed us through the suffering sacrifice of your own Son. Through faith in the Holy Spirit, we know your satisfaction and suffering for sinners and your joy over their restoration to a right relationship with the Father. So Lord, help us always to stand firm in the knowledge that nothing can separate us from your love. So thank you, Lord, for choosing us to be your servants in this time. Thank you for your mercy. Amen. God, whose giving knows no ending, is our end of the day. We stand.
And this is the way we are know we are on the path. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The hymn said all that needed to be said about giving with a grateful heart, giving in response. It's an act of worship. Let us sing our offertory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
time for the encouragement of others and increase the vitality of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Listen, Lord, we thank you for those you equipped to shape and serve your church. We ask you to be at work in each of us, that we may be prepared for your eternal kingdom through serving your mission in this present time. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. With one voice, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Beloved, you are the body of Christ, raised up by grace to live graciously. Go in peace. Grace be to God. Thank you.